Welcome back Lotus Lovers. So I'm here with my buddy Chris and we're going to be installing a cold air intake on his Evora S. Now this thing is supposed to bump it up a 20 horsepower. I'm not too sure about that, but you know what? We're going to test it out. We're going to go do a, uh, a baseline run, do some tests, see how fast it is stock. And then we're going to install this bad boy right here. All right, we're getting ready to set a baseline. Gonna make sure the external GPS is getting good, good signal. And we're gonna do uh, a 40 to 60, a 60 to 80, and a 80 to 100 run. We're gonna do four of those, average them together, see what the baseline is. Now that we have the baseline set, it's time to get to work. Chris is removing the fender liner to get better access to the engine compartment while I'm disconnecting some hoses up top. Yeah. Yeah. And then that, that right there is some plastic y looking bag. Can I do the intake? This is part of the intake too? Yeah, yeah look at the picture. Look at that. Right yeah. There. Okay. That's stock intake. Where the bag is? It's a bag of chips or something. <laughs> You can really see the mass difference when you're sitting on the ground in between two, these two cars. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. There's a big difference. To manipulate. Right, yeah. So this is the crossbar that's got to come out. Um, this is where the intake comes into the supercharger, but yeah. it goes all the way back here in this plastic box and then the giant hose back in there. Ah, hot. Yeah. Burning hot, but getting the data is worth it. Yeah, otherwise you just don't know. Right. Yeah, this is freaking hot. Still need more. Felt pretty loose, but never can tell. That's what she said. Yeah. Never a lack of. That's what she said. Jokes when working on a car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the wire. Oh fuck. <laughs> hot, hot, hot. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. It's hot, really hot. hot. This is isn't part of the intake. This thing, but they they just want us to remove it just so uh, that yeah, we can we can get to the intake. Yeah. All right, so we've done step two. <laughs> yeah, step two. <laughs> Move the air box lid. I think maybe. It, uh, I'm keeping it from going back together over here. Well, there. there we go. Yeah. We gotta pop these little hoses off too. There we go. And they want you to take uh, they want you to take the math off. Yeah, I got the body it's all body cleaner. Oh, okay. Now that is definitely a Lotus specific filter. I might be going out of order on the steps, but I figured we gotta take these bolts out. So I saw them, so I was like, I'm taking them out. Leave the solenoid connected electrically and fix it to an adjacent hose of the tie wrap. Okay. Yeah, so we gotta so got all that. pop this screw off right there. Kind of set that to the side. Right. The little valve. Right so unclip the red line and then pull this little hose off. Okay. Alright. Push that up out of the way a little bit. And then this. Whoops, we've got a ouch hot. Is there is there something still connected in here? It's the, just the bag of chips. The bag of chips. Well, the bag of chips comes out with it. Let me see it, yeah. Accor according to the picture. Well see see this? We get this off, the bag of chips will come off and it'll make more room. I mean, according to the instructions, they're just like, yeah, just pull it out. Yeah, they were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I guess I guess that bag of chips is the U bypass duct. Yeah. It does say remove one end of the U bypass duct, removing the airbox easier. I swear it still feels like it's attached to something. Ah, yes, 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 yes. That stupid bag of chips thing is, is, is back. All right, try to pull it up now. Okay, hold on. There's still There's a, actually more hoses down here. Yeah, I was about to say there's gotta be like a clip or something. Yeah, it's like one of those little pushing clips. You can just pull it out. Yeah. You see that metal bracket that it's attached to? Yeah. You can just you can just pull, pull that it, hose away from it. Pull that hose away from it, yeah. There you go. 
You know what's funny is I was thinking it's not actually that bad. <laughs> as far as working on mid-engine cars go. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. It's coming now. Wiggle it. Wiggle it a little. All right. <laughs> All right, so here's the factory intake. It's a giant monstrosity with multiple horns and bags and the do who knows what and that's crazy. And then this simplicity, the new intake. <laughs> that is Colin Chapman's dream. Yeah, exactly. Simplify and add lightness. You left a nice big hole to work in too. I want to take a look and see what this new filter element looks like. ITG. Who's ITG, man? Because sure. the intake is by BOE, right? Yeah, BOE. I guess. It's probably like a, just a standard filter, you know? So that's probably really good. Like you get rid of that weird uh, triangle, yeah. the proprietary Lotus one. Yeah. Oh, it's an oiled. Foam. Is it just foam? Yeah, it's a. It's just foam. Oh, interesting. Well, I mean, it's obviously gonna flow more air, but it's probably gonna flow more dirt too. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan. Um, I mean, it, they obviously flow more more air, but uh, they flow more dirt too. Like it's just like those K and N filters, man. If you uh, if you're ever curious about like what they really do, uh, a guy named uh, his channel is Project Farm. Just go check out Project Farm's uh, video on uh, filter comparison. Yeah, you can definitely see it flowing more air, but it's flowing more dirt too. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we gotta attach the the new hose to the box. I'm all about hose boxes. <laughs> this little thing was a bitch to get on. Squeezing the worm clamp or the worm drive. Doing the worm drive. Doing the worm drive. That's what I give the ladies. You know what's funny is the the factory intake actually has nicer clamps than this does. So they want us to put the whole thing together. Okay. Well, that's Not bad. going in a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. And we want these both timed the same as what they were saying, yes. right? 12 o'clock high. So, and make sure like our hose clamps are all kind of lined up so we can get to them with... You should make them fill up. Okay, so. all right. Does that feel secure? Now we're gonna have to put the bracket in. Ooh. So this goes where the factory air box was. To which which bolt hole? Um, Does it say which one? It shows us. It's okay, the far one. The far one. Yeah, the instructions are actually pretty good. Wow, supercharger is still hot. Jesus. Always good to have a third hand around. Yeah. The third hand is like the DIY mechanics like special friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's supposed to sit like that. Like this. Yeah. Okay. You wanna right. feed me the this robot's penis through there? And yeah. Danger robots. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's totally like a, a <laughs> the robot arms from <laughs> What's His Face. <laughs> the PVC uh, valve hose. Yeah. So this goes on like goes on this. First. Yeah, like that. There we go. So that goes on first, and then you get in there and shove it on. It's almost like it doesn't bend enough, right? Yeah. It's kind of strange. Tell you what, would you mind help me? Ah, there we go. There you go. You, gotta, you just gotta know how to wiggle it, man. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta wiggle her in there. You, you have it on, don't you? It's on there. Oh, God damn. Okay. It is, you know, it's kind of funny. This actually bends it more than the factory bend. <laughs> I kind of don't like that. I don't like that, yeah. Um, But this is where it goes. I think I can go ahead and like tighten these clamps, too. That way it doesn't come back off after yeah, all yeah, of our... All of our machinations. You know, I'm definitely an advocate for simplifying all this stuff, right? Yeah. Because like that, the, the sock intake is gigantic for really no reason, right? It's just but annoying thing. I suspect the majority of the extra flow yeah. is actually coming from that filter. We have some things to deal with over here, like this little electro valve. So this just, this is actually what holds your, Jesus Christ, the supercharger's still hot. Oh, you really gotta stretch it. Gotta get two hands in here. That's all that holds the canister on, is that right. little, little rubber band on that bracket. Well, it feels, actually feels pretty sturdy. Yeah, it After looks, you man-stretched it. Okay, so they want us to put the bar back. Thanks for uh, sweating on my car. 
Somebody needs to bleed on it to like uh, make it official. Like yeah, the, I've already I've already bled. So have you? Okay, good. Yeah, I'm good. The, I have blood on my arm right now. If you don't bleed on the car while you're working on it, it the means car it's gods gonna be are, it's not gonna be faster. Yeah, it's these are all uh, things Andrew did for you, right? Check out uh, Color Cartel for some cool graffiti stuff. Okay, so we have the vacuum here. This this was uh, supplied to the vacuum. This goes to the Y and this goes down to the exhaust pod. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, remove this hose, connect the vacuum here, and then delete the Y. Pull it, uh, pull it straight. Straight. Yeah, I'm not. <sighs> right hand never does anything straight. She likes that though, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Added more lightness. Yeah, exactly. All right. And then we can just zip tie that like to the bar. Extra parts deleted. Did you already put, okay, you already put this part back to the body. Let's uh, put new zip ties in these little holders. Man, I should have been down here this entire time. It's a lot cooler. It's a lot cooler. It, it should still kind of fit. Just... Yeah, whoever had this off last time buggered this thing up. So you're telling me Chester in Birmingham screwed this up at the factory. I think it was Nigel. Nigel? Oh uh, yeah, Nigel. Nigel works on Thursdays. He's always itching for Friday. Getting these uh, vents like connected up correctly, especially with these mid-engine cars, yeah. is very critical. My little X19 I have, you know, it would overheat in if I was sitting still, right? Mm -hmm. What would happen is like the fuel rail would get heat soaked and then the fuel would just be boiling in there before it could even like inject so it. The designers, they actually built it with a little system to supply air, blow air on the fuel rail. It was running, like I knew it was working, but it, for whatever reason, it wasn't actually cooling off the fuel rail. Well, I ended up like taking apart like the whole thing. Yeah. And found out that the the tube, like this stupid tube, yeah. was just like cockeyed a little bit. All right. All right, we're done. Yeah, if nothing else, it looks a lot nicer in the engine bay. Yeah, yeah. With that gigantic thing gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can definitely hear the uh, supercharger more. And you think you can feel it a little bit more in the mid-range, right? I'm hoping. <laughs> You're hoping? Yeah, I think I can. Well, we're gonna find out we're here in a second. Out, yeah. yeah, find check yeah, the numbers. I'm scared now. Well, it's nice that it doesn't really seem louder, but you can just definitely hear it better. Yeah. Which I actually kind of like. That's nice. Seems to be. It sings a nice song. Right. Yeah. All right. Ready? Ready. After crunching the numbers at home, we can see that there was zero improvement on both the high end and the low end of the power band. However, the 11% improvement in the mid-range is pretty significant. Hopefully this helps any other Lotus owners make a decision on this intake. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.